So as at this point in time, I managed to label 49 uh, frames and I can jump forward and, and back between them. Um, and the next part here is to go up under File and then say Save As and then uh, ensure that I save the, the data here. Um, and from here I can start to train the actual network uh, for detecting this animal. I'll choose the predict menu and then I can select from a different set of uh, possibilities here. I'll just train something for a single animal as it's uh, the simplest way of, of doing it. Um, and then we need to specify some uh, details about how we should actually uh, use this. One of the important parameters here is the input scaling. Right now we have a neural network that only looks at uh, 76 pixels in the input image and that's way smaller than the typical size of, of the animal we're looking at here so somehow we need to make this larger. Um, one way is to simply scale the input image down by a certain factor, in this case down to 10% of its original size and then we can see approximately how large an area that uh, will fill here. Um, I think I'll limit this to around uh, 20%. But I also have the opp opportunity to um, actually choose how many filters to, to utilize here. Um, and also the, the max stride. If I increase that to 32, I increase the size of the area that um, the neural network will look at but it also comes at the expense that it will be more uh, expensive to actually train this network. So that's not the, the greatest thing. Um, in addition, we have some augmentation parameters here that can, can make sense to, to look into. Um, as we are using a camera that looks straight down uh, from above, we can allow us to have changes in rotation from a minus 180 degrees up to 180 degrees. We can also try to s make different sizes of the input uh, images, zoom a bit in, zoom a bit out. Um, we have the scale min and scale max parameters here. This artificially increases the amount of training data we have access to and that seems to work out uh, quite nice, nicely. Um, yes. So there are a, a different uh, number of settings uh, down here. Um, so yeah, I think this is a, a decent uh, set. There is a lot of parameters here. We don't need to consider all of those. Um, and what we can do now is to export training job package here and then provide a location for this. What happens here is that it will create um, a file that will be saved in, in this location. Uh, I have it here. It takes a, a while. Uh, where it takes all the images we have annotated, including information about where we have marked, marked things up in, in that uh, image, and that will be saved in, in a file. And when it's finished uh, writing this, it should appear over here. And yeah, that can take a while. It's still running, yes. Um, we'll just say wait. Uh, it takes some time to extract all the images, save them in a proper format and, and so on. Um, Alright, I'll just say save here. I wonder if I get started it uh, early on or not. Um, okay, I 
Mm, yeah, this takes some time. Here we can see that it has started making the, the file. And we can also see that it actually fills quite much, 107 megabytes at, at the moment here. And now it m tells us that uh, we actually finished with this part. And here it just tells us exactly where to, to find this fired file. So for the next step will be to extract this folder here. Um, So, actually, I think I, I managed to start it twice. Um, but then I can open uh, the file here, and we can see there are different um, elements uh, present here. Um, of interest is this uh, single instance, which uh, dot uh, JSON which has a lot of information about what happens in here. Um, usually this is set to, to what you uh, want to have. I have one change I usually make, and that is to... Um, uh, to this delete this visualization images, to write false in, instead of true here, because then it will save some images uh, from the uh, actually training of the program. So I choose manual to update this. This is not needed to do, but I think it's nice to have. And at this point, um, I can either take the zip file sent to someone with a large computer, move it to a large computer, and then actually run the training there. Or I can start it uh, in, in this uh, location. I need to uh, ensure that I have loaded this um, correctly. So we have everything in place here, and then I can say uh, sh train script. And now the uh, neural network will start training. It takes some time. The last time I did this, it took uh, two and a half hour on my small laptop. Um, so it can easily take a, a lot of time here. Um, I have increased the amount of um, details utilized in the training here, so it will probably take even longer than it did uh, before, but that's it. Hopefully, when the model has been trained, we will be able to automatically detect the presence of this uh, dolphin in, in this case, and also mark the interest points uh, in the video automatically using the, the sleep framework afterwards. So this is what you need to do to be able to uh, start the training after you have annotated uh, a suitable number of of um, training samples for this.